welcome back to my channel Laquanda's Heart and today I am I decided to do a video to talk about um, some recent events and past experiences that I've had I'm going to put a trigger warning here as some of the content may be triggering for individuals who have experienced similar events so make sure you take care of yourself before you listen to this um, video uh, so for those who follow me on Instagram at Laquanda's Heart, then you know I shared an incident that had taken place over the summer, um, which is now, um, you know, a, a legal case uh, that I have um, against someone um, where I pressed, uh, where assault charges were pressed against the individual. Um, it's still a pending case so there's certain things that I probably won't go in too much detail about um, but I wanted in experiencing that situation made me think about other situations that I have gone through and I just never you know I told people about but I never spoke about it publicly um, and so I wanted to share um, everyone's familiar with the Me Too movement, um, you know, really highlighting the experiences that women go through or have gone through um, that have been traumatic for them. And for me, um, I moved to the D.C. metro area, back to the D.C. metro area in 2000, early um, 2016. Um, during this time, I, you know, didn't know anyone. I was trying to get to know people and I was commuting back and forth to DC. So what happened was a lot of the people that I started to meet, I started to meet on the train, um, which was, you know, um, became a running joke at my, um, my, my, one of my jobs was that, you know, you're always meeting someone on the train. And that was because I would just talk to people. <laughs> And it was one um, day I had met this gentleman um, on the train and, you know, we started um, talking. He asked me, just communicating, he asked me for my number, I gave it to him. Um, and we lived in the similar um, vicinity of each other, so we would walk in the same direction. He would usually take the bus down to where his property was and I would walk to um to my um dwelling and so he eventually had asked me out on a date um which i had no problem with you know i was new to the area i wanted to meet people and so i we went out on a date the date was fine and when we got back to the car i um was trying to um get in i was getting into the car because i drove and he came over and he tried to kiss me and I did this whoa <laughs> you know I'm like whoa hold up and I was just like no this is the first date I really don't want to kiss you and it just you know um it wasn't a big deal um and so he was cool um one thing about him is that he was uh, an avid salsa dancer and so we talked about um going dancing to salsa clubs and you know at that time I really wanted to you know get out and get in you know get on new scenes and really um, you know spread my wings socially and find my group of people um, but I didn't know how to do salsa and I was like I don't know how to do salsa it's like I don't want to go to a club a salsa club and look like a complete idiot and so he was like, well, look, I have all these instructional videos. I can um, show you how to um, how to salsa and give you lessons. And then we can go to, you know, a salsa club. And I was like, that's great. Thank you so much. And so we had scheduled a time um, for us to, um, for me to come over and to start, you know, my salsa lessons. And so I was so excited. So it, we didn't live far from where I live. So I got over to the property where he resided and you know, we got to his apartment and 
you know, we, you know, he turned on the thing and he would show me and he would explain to what everything was and we would, you know, we would practice. And so we did this, um, I, I want to say probably for an hour, um, the first, the first lesson, which was the last lesson. Um, but it was really fun. It was, it was really fun. It was a new experience. I had never, you know, done it before. And um, everything was great. Everything was, was fine. You know, I was laughing when I made mistakes, you know, but he was careful in, his, you know, in showing me how to correct things, to, the certain ways to position my body. And he was a really good dancer. Um, and I remember um, sitting down on his sofa i sat down on the sofa because we were in the living room practicing um because we were watching things on the television i sat down on the sofa and i didn't see him sit down um because when i sat down all of a sudden i felt his body come towards mine and it happened so quickly his body called came towards mine and then all of a sudden I'm pinned down on the couch um, or the sofa and I'm pinned down and he's on top of me and I immediately push my arms up against his his chest and I'm like what are you doing and I'm laying down on the sofa and he's laying down on top of me and he's pushing up against my body and he's like starting to kiss on me and I'm like pushing him and I'm like, no. And I was like, no, what are you doing? No. And somehow I got the strength to push him off of me. And I was like, what are you, you know, what are you doing? And he, at that point, he grabs my wrist and he pulled, pins my, my wrist back up against the um, back of the sofa. And he's sitting in front of me and I'm, I'm like terrified because I was like, oh my gosh, you know, what, what is happening here? You know, things are happening so fast. My mind is just like going, you know, you know, 90 miles, you know, per second. And he manages to, and I'm trying to struggle and he manages to pin both of my arms um, together with one hand and he's using his other hand to start to touch me. And he makes this comment like doesn't it feel good to have a man touch you this way and i'm like no and i was like i'm like let go of me and he only had one hand on me and i'm able to break my hands free and i immediately stand up and i was like i want to leave and i want to leave now um he lived in a high rise i did not know how to get back out um and so he had to show me the way out and i am terrified because i immediately like grab my stuff and i get outside the apartment and he's walking and he's showing me out and like he's not really he's not saying anything and i get in my car and i leave and i don't live i live less than five minutes away from him at the time and i'm just like oh my god what what just happened and I'm just like shaking. I'm, I'm completely shaking. And I was like, do I go to the police? Do I, you know, what do I do? And so I told one person because I was like, they need to know if someone tries to come to this house. Then I told them and to put them on alert. And the next day I was getting up to go, go to work and I knew I had to get on the train. And I, that's where I always saw him every morning and every evening because we commuted at the same time. And I was, I was terrified. Um, I, my heart was racing. I began to have panic. I was been, beginning to have a panic attack. And when I finally, you know, made myself get on the train, I disassociated. I disconnected from reality for like, almost two hours like I was riding the train and realized that oh my gosh I've missed my stops um, I didn't know where I was and I finally I was late for work I pulled myself together to you know get off the train 
um, find out where I was and to get back to um, my location. And when I did, I got to work and I told my boss who was, I worked at a psychiatric hospital at the time, so she was a therapist. I told her what happened and she was like, you she's like, you probably need to make a police report against him. And she gave me a hotline to call and she was like, Laquanda, you really need support. And so she gave me two weeks off from work because I, my anxiety, anxiety was through the roof. Um, when I had been off from work for two weeks, that meant I didn't have to get on the train, which was a relief for me. Um, I, and I did not see him for that, for that, for that span of time. I shared with, I began to share with people what was going on. And at the time I shared with my then, um, ex, my now ex best friend, what happened and their response to me was, well, you, you shouldn't have went over to his house. Um, and that was the, um, the theme, the underlining theme that everyone was giving me that I shouldn't have went to his house, um, that I had to take responsibility because it was partly my fault for going over there. And, and that was from them. Um, when I called the hotlines and I was like, everyone is blaming me, you know, they were angry. They was like, it's not your fault. You know, he had no right to put his hands on you. And so I felt support um, in that area. And for that incident, incident, I did not file police. Um, I did not file charges or um, file a police report against the individual. Um, when I started going back to work, um, I had pretty much, you know, put the incident out of my mind. Um, and then one day I'm on the train and I'm sitting down by myself and I hear someone say, Hey Laquanda. And I look up and it's him. And he looks at me and he sits next to me and I am almost frozen completely. And he says, well, I know the uh, the other night um, I was aggressive, but I'm not going to apologize to you for anything because if I want something, then I'm going to get it. And he, at that point, got up and walked off the train, and that was like the last time that I ever saw him. And I was so disgusted um, at the level of arrogance that he had that to him it was just well it was something that I wanted to do and I was going to do it regardless of how you felt um, so that was very um, traumatic for me but it wasn't the first time that something like this happened um, in high school I remember I would be in class and there would be this 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 guy who would take my arm, he would sit behind me intentionally, and he would take my arm and he would bend it and try to force me to touch his penis. Um, and he would do things like that to me throughout the whole year. And by the end of that school year, I had been sexually harassed by him so much. Um, and there was a combination of other things that had taken place. Um, that summer I had attempted um, suicide and you know it was you know in talking to my therapist regarding the new um, regarding the, the new experience that had taken place um, where there's now pending legal charges you know my my therapist my psychologist was like you have a strong trauma history and you know and when the new experience had taken place where someone had lured me into a closed area and um you know and i had to push my way out um i you know began to have nightmares i began to have panic attacks and it was all you know it was all scary again because all these past experiences started to, to come back and I was scared. 
Um, the going through the legal process, this time I did press charges against the individual. Um, going through the legal process has been um, exhausting. It has been triggering, um, but I've been pushing through. And um, for anyone who is going through um, these things, um, I know it seems taboo to say you're not alone, but you're not. There's so many of us who have stories. And, you know, I look at my daughter and I say that no one has the right. I want her to understand that no one has the right to make you feel uncomfortable. No one has the right to make you feel unsafe and no one has a right to ever touch you and um to intimidate you and so that's why i push on um and that's why i'm just sharing so i just wanted to share um this with anyone and to encourage anyone who's this, who um has gone through similar things um that it's not your fault um and that um we are here for you um, and that you reach out and find support persons who will be there for you as well. All right, you guys. Till next time. Bye.